My name's Clifton Bragley. I'm going to talk you through the pelvic equilibrium theory clinical protocol using a digital pelvic inclinometer. So this is Matt. Matt's a sports scientist. We know visually that he has a longer right leg. We don't know whether it's a bony difference or an anatomical difference at this point. And this is why we're going to use this protocol to tell us the difference between the two. So we've measured his right side, we've measured his left side. So these are his arrival numbers, his arrival numbers to the clinic before we do any exercises, any stretching, any intervention, any treatment. He's arrived with 10 degrees positive on his left, three degrees positive on his right, giving us a seven degree pelvic torsion. We're looking for normative values of about eight to 10. So now we start the static trial part of the protocol. We use a nine mil board under his left side, what we know to be a short side. He flexes forward three times, it can be two, three, four, and this changes the forces against the axes and the acetabulae and the sacral axes. We then measure the right side again. We're taking a sagittal plane measurement between the PSIS and the ASIS. We measure his right, we measure the left. The practitioner is at eye level to the LCD screen so they can see the spirit level as well making sure that the digital pelvic inclinometer is level in at least two planes. So now we repeat the protocol with the rays underneath his right side, what we believe to be his long side. We repeat the methodology measuring the inclination on the right, and then we're going to repeat the measurements on the left. Why a 9mm board and why 9mm inside the shoes? Because it gives us a good response from the pelvis. It wouldn't necessarily be the raise that you would send the patients away with, but it's a good raise to use for this protocol. So in the static trial, we raise the left side, and on the left we had 9 degrees positive and 8 degrees positive, giving us a 1 degree pelvic torsion. When we raise the right, on the left side we had 10 degrees positive, and on the right we had 2 degrees positive, giving us an 8 degree pelvic torsion. So just from that simple methodology, the pelvis is saying, do not raise the right side, raise the left, I reduce the pelvic torsion. This is the dynamic functional trial. We're going to place the blue rays, which is 9 mil at the rear foot and 3 mil at the forefoot, giving us a 6 mil drop off. He places both shoes on again. Why don't we put 9 mil the whole length of the shoe? Because it won't go inside the shoe. 9 mil at the heel is good enough to get the same kind of response. So with dynamic delays on the treadmill at 4 km an hour using motion palpation, that's great sacral at joint motion, rocking on both sides. So looking at the pelvis laterally, we want a nice anterior rock of the pelvis as it goes through the contact phase of gait with the highest inclination forwards being at heel lift. That's normal motion. Doing some dynamic delays on the left sacral left joint. There's independent movement between the sacrum and the PSIS. That's good movement. And on the right, again, one thumb's going up on one side and up on the other. That's good sacral left joint movement. That's exactly what, what you're looking for. So now Matt sits down. He takes his shoes off. We're going to move the functional trial from the left shoe to the right shoe. Now at this point, he can't move around because we've uncompensated the power. So if he moves around, he's going to throw the numbers out. So if he wants to go off somewhere, you've either got to start again or he can't go until you've finished. So the raise is now on the right, the longer leg. We've got a more of a triangular motion. He's going up on the right thumb and not on the left. So the left anonymous in the sagittal plane still has a nice anterior rock and probably a little bit more because you might even develop an AS ilium, an anterior rotation with that being the short side and we've raised the longer right side. Now the right side, looking at it uh, laterally, has a PI ilium, a posterior inferior rotation, which is an abnormal response to the rays. This is going to drop and internally rotate the acetabulum, creating injuries. The dynamic delays on the left is still good. So now the right side is locked up. This is the neuroligamentous lock by uh, feedback from the mechanoreceptors and the nociceptors along the afferent pathway to try and protect the pelvis. So during the dynamic functional trial, with the 9 mil rays in the shoe on the right, on the left, we had 10 degrees positive. On the right, we had 11 degrees positive, given as a 1 degree pelvic torsion. So again, improved function when we raise the left side. And then on the right, when the raise was in the right, on the left side of the pelvis, we had 11 degrees positive. On the right side, we had 
the one degree positive, giving us a 10 degree pelvic torsion. Again, pelvic torsion becoming worse when you raise the right side. So looking at the analysis, we had a 10 degree range of movements on the right hemipelvis, a two degree on the left. We know the left leg was the short leg. If we analyze, what the system has is an algorithm in the back that establishes the adaptive mechanism. So in this case, it's a single femoral pathway, PI ilium long side. So in this situation, the pelvis is taking on a posterior inferior orientation to try and balance the body's center of mass and stance and gait. And we know with the PI ilium that the acetabulum drops and internally rotates, affecting the rest of the kinetic chain. And with good functional anatomy knowledge, you can work out why a particular injury is occurring in a particular individual and making your treatment and your intervention a little bit more effective.